Thank you so much for watching It Is Written. Today, we are in the sixth part of a series on depression. Now, maybe you're not depressed and you're about to turn off the TV. Don't turn off that TV because depression is a subject that not only touches every family, but the principles we've been learning help any individual have better brain function and really a better life in general. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have with me in studio, Dr. Neil Nedley. Dr. Nedley, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Chris. It's great to be here. You know, Dr. Nedley has joined us for all of this series. Dr. Nedley is a physician that's been practicing for 27 years. He is an internal medicine doctor with a specialty in mental health and the hard to diagnose patient. In addition to those responsibilities and seeing patients, Dr. Nedley is the president of Weimar Institute. Dr. Nedley, tell me, what is Weimar Institute? Weimar Institute is an institute of higher education. Uh, we have a college, we have advanced degrees. Uh, but it is, its motto is to heal a hurting world, okay. physically, mentally, socially, spiritually. And so the students that go there um, learn how they can actually do that as part of their career. But we also have a New START program, and of course that's part of their education, but people come from all over the world that have diabetes or heart disease or um, other physical diseases, cancer, for instance, and uh, need additional approaches. And so we treat things through nutrition and lifestyle approaches there, plus some traditional approaches as well. Okay, now I wanna hit a pause button there. You said New Start program. Now many yes. of our view viewers would be familiar with New Start because Bev Haynes has gone through the New Start acronym, which is an acronym, as I understand it, an acronym that actually was, was originated at Weimar and actually trademark, trademarked by Weimar Institute. That's right. Anyone who uses the term actually is supposed to be checking with us and getting permission because it is trademarked. Okay. And, of course, it stands for things. That's what an acronym is. So nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, trust in God. Those are the eight natural remedies that are utilized in the New Start program to bring about pretty profound results. Okay. And if someone was interested, maybe somebody's watching and they say, you know, I'd be really interested in getting into a program that's going to help me in my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. How would they find out more about the New Start program? Newstart.com. That's simple. Just go to newstart.com. Yeah. Find that. Now, if somebody was interested in Weimar and the higher learning institution that's there, that how would, would they find out more about that? That would be weimar.edu. Now, is there anything else that happens at Weimar that uh, might be helpful to somebody watching? Well, we put on the mental health program, the Depression and Anxiety Recovery Program. And for that program, you need to log on to depressionthewayout.com. Okay, that's easy to remember. And so anyone that's interested in those things, depressionthewayout.com, newstart.com, and weimar.edu. Correct. Very good. Well, Dr. Nedley, as we've been talking about depression, mm -hmm. how big of a problem in the world is depression? It's a big enough problem that one out of four women at some point in their life in the Western world are going to suffer from it. One out of eight men. And that's actually old data. Newer data shows it's probably going to be more likely than that even in the future. So that's going to touch a large segment of society. And it is a big problem here in Canada. And how is depression traditionally treated? Number one treatment, even today, is medication. Okay. How successful is treating depression through medication? Medications have their limitations, unfortunately. Medicines can help. The drug company data shows up to 70% of the time it might produce some benefit, but only 20% or maybe up to 28%, depending on the study, will actually have a remission as a result of taking medicine alone. 20 to 28% actually experience remission through taking medication. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about this before, and I want to be careful making too much of a joke about it, but uh, you know, a, a traditional doctor, a, an orthopedic surgeon uh, that was only 25% of the time successful 
in fixing a knee, fixing an elbow, fixing a shoulder, not going to be practicing very long, are they? They wouldn't. Their medical associations would eliminate them pretty quick. Okay. And to the viewer that's watching that might be taking medication, we're not advocating that they need to go take, you know, just stop taking their medication or anything like that. Nothing radical. No, they still need to be seeing their doctor. Okay. But we've been going through this process here and through this series of programs here where we've found that there is a way out of depression and ways to address it actually, uh, and I hate to use the word naturally, but y addressing it with practical steps that I can do right today through lifestyle change. That's right. And if you've missed any of those shows, you can go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash IIW Canada, and you can watch any of these programs. Now today, we're going to talk about another way uh, to address the issue of depression and a way to address actually mental health in general. And we're going to talk about emotional intelligence. Yes. Now I've heard about IQ. You're right. Okay. But EQ e and, and emotional intelligence. What, what is emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence is knowing and understanding your emotions and the emotions of others and responding to those emotions in a healthy way. Knowing and understanding my emotions, mm -hmm. knowing and understanding others' emotions, mm -hmm. and responding in a healthful way. In a healthy way. In a healthy way, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, why is emotional intelligence important then? Well, it has more to do with our success and happiness than even our IQ does. In fact, uh, how successful you are in life as well as how happy you are uh, has been intricately tied to your EQ or your emotional quotient or emotional intelligence. So it's a very important mental health factor, so important that we measure it in every patient that comes in to see me for mental health issues. And after they're treated, we measure it again to see where they're at in this process. So emotional intelligence, or EQ, the emotional quotient, mm -hmm. is more important than IQ in having a successful life. Correct. Okay, and you've addressed some of that, but let's expand a little bit. Well, why, why is that, and what are you seeing as you see patients with, and you analyze their EQ? Well, it gets into the five aspects of emotional intelligence. Okay. First one is knowing our emotions. In okay. other words, being able to identify precisely the emotion that we're feeling at that time. Okay. But not only identifying the emotion. Yes. But knowing why we're feeling that way. Okay. And if we blame the why on just what someone else did to us or what happened to us. Yes. We actually don't have a very high emotional intelligence. Okay. Because it's not only what happens to us, but our role in what happens to us. In other words, what we think about what happened to us that then plays a direct bearing on our emotions and our behavior. See, Chris, it's our thoughts that cause our emotions and behavior. Mm -hmm. And so emotionally intelligent people are actually disciplining their thoughts. They're not only knowing their emotions and why they're feeling that way. Okay. The second aspect is they're managing their emotions. Okay. People with low emotional intelligence are simply managed by their emotions moment by moment, day by day. Yes. People with high emotional intelligence still have powerful emotions, but they're managing those emotions. Quite different. Okay, so knowing is the first step, mm -hmm. and then managing, and then what are those other, those other aspects? The other aspects are recognizing emotions in others. Okay. And the fourth part is managing relationships with others. Okay. And you might guess this is why it has a lot to do with our happiness, because our happiness has so much to do with our social relationships. Yes. And the fifth aspect is motivating ourselves to achieve our goals. In the word emotion is the word motion. If our emotions are based on what's true and accurate, it can powerfully motivate us to achieve our goals. And that's why it's also very much intricately connected with our success. Okay. So when we talk about emotional intelligence, the, the aspects of emotional intelligence, it's knowing, mm -hmm. it's managing, mm -hmm. recognizing in others, mm -hmm. managing. And what was that last one? Motivating ourselves to achieve our goal. 
So we understand what emotional intelligence is. Yes. We understand the aspects of emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. What influences emotional intelligence? Well, our genetics have a role to play. Okay. Our um, current level of emotional support has a role to play. Even how much sleep we've gotten in the last 48 hours can influence us. Uh, our nutrition, what we're eating, can have an influence over us. But for most people, the most important aspect of emotional intelligence is simply our beliefs, our evaluation of events, the way we think about problems, and our silent self-talk. Those are the moment-by-moment -moment messages that we're giving ourselves. So our beliefs, mm -hmm. how we're evaluating things, mm -hmm. and how we're thinking, that is the most important influence on emotional intelligence. Yes. Okay. So, and if emotional intelligence is going to dictate, and by the way, this is, this is very hopeful for, for individuals because, uh, you know, uh, if we don't score high on the IQ test. Right. Now, another show, we're going to talk about how to improve that IQ. Right. But not as a part of this series. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying, though, is even more important than your IQ mm -hmm. is your EQ or your emotional intelligence. Correct. And that emotional intelligence, the things that are going to influence it the most are our beliefs, how we evaluate, mm -hmm. and how we think. Yes. So then how can someone improve their emotional intelligence? Our feelings actually result from the messages we give ourselves. Our thoughts have much more to do with how we're feeling than what is actually happening in our life. And research has documented that negative thoughts which cause emotional turmoil nearly always contain gross distortions. The thoughts on the surface appear rational, but they are often just plain wrong and twisted thinking is a major cause of suffering. So the answer to your question is we need to correct distorted thoughts and our emotional intelligence will dramatically improve. Okay, so we're going to come to this, this, this distorted thoughts. But what you're saying, because I want to make sure we're hearing this and I'm hearing this, mm -hmm. what happens in my life and how I feel is actually directly related to how I think about what's happening. And so I could be going through a bad situation, and if I'm thinking right, then my feelings would be better. Exactly. You know, Paul and Silas are a good example. They were taken against their will. They were beaten 39 times with a cat of nine tails. Their backs were laid open. They were then put on an irregular dirt floor with rocks, feet put up in stocks. And there they were, crying uncontrollably in prison and saying, Why us, Lord? Now, now Dr. Dudley, I know you're doing <laughs> a little tongue-in-cheek. Actually, we find them. We find them singing songs. Yeah. And, 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 seem, and, 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 you know, the Bible doesn't necessarily convey emotions, but they seem, they're they, not complaining they had at all. happy looks on their faces. Yes. And they were singing praises to God. Now, why could they be doing that? Because their thoughts had much more to do with how they were feeling than what was actually happening in their life. And they weren't thinking fantasy thoughts. It wasn't pop psychology that they were on a beach on Lake Ontario somewhere. You know, they uh, were thinking true and accurate thoughts. And those true and accurate thoughts were so powerful that under the most adverse circumstances, they could still have great emotional stability. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to change thinking errors or distorted thinking or cognitive distortion correct okay so what would be an example of distorted thinking or cognitive distortion well uh, mental filter for instance there's actually 10 different ways of distorted thinking okay okay so, so 10 different ways name let's a few of them here today. okay but a mental filter this is where you're just looking at one side of the equation okay I'll tell you about a gentleman who came to our program he said nothing is going right in my life Okay. He said, my boss yells at me almost constantly. My roof is leaking. 
I didn't have even enough money to pay for this program. I had to take it out on credit cards. My wife nags almost constantly. And furthermore, I'm short and fat, and now I'm going bald. <laughs> Nothing good in my life. But yet, as I talked to him, I realized that he had a beautiful wife. Even though he was short and fat, he still slept well. Uh, he could still feed himself. He could still walk. Uh, he actually enjoyed his church. He had some good friends. And he had the potential to do a lot of good things. But here he was on the one side of the equation. Nothing good in my life. A mental filter. Okay. So a mental filter is going to prevent us to think positively about really anything. Yeah, rationally, really. It, it's not going to get us thinking rationally. And, and the solution to a mental filter is you have to be intentional and forceful of finding evidence to support a different way of thinking. So it requires some thought process yourself in regards to, wait a minute, I'm, am I looking at just one side of the equation? Let's be intentional and forceful. Is there a different way I can think about this? Okay. And so, yeah, and you, you said it twice, but I want to make sure we call that. So the way I deal with an intentional, or excuse me, the way I deal with a mental filter mm -hmm. is I think the two words you used were intentional mm -hmm. and forceful. Yes. Okay. So if I have a mental filter and I think nothing good can happen to me, my life is awful. My life is terrible. Whatever that mental filter is that now is going to set the stage for everything in my life, mm -hmm. intentional and forceful. Maybe discuss a little bit more. What does it mean to be intentional and forceful? How am I going to change that mental filter? If somebody's watching right now today saying, what, well, that's my life. Nothing good happens in my life. How can they change their thinking on that? Well, they need to stop and realize, is there anything good in my life? You know, and, you know, this guy's wife, for instance, had nags, but, you know, she was a beautiful girl and he loved her and she had a lot of positive things about her. Okay. But yet, you know, nothing good. Wait a minute. There's some good things about that woman. Otherwise, you wouldn't have married her to begin with. Uh, and, uh, you know, even though you're going bald, I mean, there's still a lot of things that you can do. He actually was a good looking guy. Uh, so it, uh, it, it does require some pausing, some stopping and some reanalyzation and trying to just look at the other side. Now, wait a minute. Can I look at the other side? And, you know, sometimes it's tough when you're just thinking on one side. So yes. it requires you to take some time. Maybe you need to go out and take a walk. Take a few deep breaths and then say, okay, I'm going to be intentional. Let's see uh, what I can fill out on the other side here. And while you take the walk, you're going to get some exercise, which is going to help you to have some frontal lobe activity, which exactly. is going to help you to think more logically and have better judgment That's so right. you can make a better decision. Exactly. And, you know, it, it's an amazing thing. Um, and, and as we talk about things in the realm of the Bible and spiritual things, it's amazing in our society that the devil has used things that can be used for good, but to use them to keep us so busy that we never have a moment to think. <laughs> and what you're saying there is we need to take a pause. And, it, and, and, and I know it's not the same thing, but all I could remember is from my childhood, you know, when they teach you about fire. If you're ever on fire, stop, drop, and roll. Yeah. And what you're saying is, is if we have a mental filter and we've said nothing good can happen in my life or whatever the mental filter is, I am this way. I need to stop, I need to pause, I need to think, mm -hmm. and I need to be intentional and forceful in changing how I think. Exactly. Okay. Now, you said there's 10 different. Now, we don't have time to go through all 10, but maybe we can do at least one or two more. What's another cognitive distortion? Overgeneralization. It's okay. Another one. All right. Now, intelligent people have a tendency to do this because to generalize, you have to be intelligent. Okay. Uh, but there's a tendency to overgeneralize. Okay. And I'll just tell you an example of another Please. case. This was actually a, a sweet mate of mine. I actually lived in the same dorm when I was in my pre med era years, you know, my second year. And he had his eye on a girl for about six months before he mustered up enough courage to ask her out. Okay. And uh, he came to us. We gave him some advice. He was kind of shy. And afterwards, he's walking back to the dorm. It looks like he's about ready to cry. And I said, Glenn, what happened? He said, Neil, I'm destined to be lonely and miserable the rest <laughs> of my life. 
Okay. What did she say? She said she had another event and couldn't go. And I said, so you conclude that? And he said, well, I just got to thinking if she just thought half as much about me as I think about her, she would have canceled that event and gone with me. So I'm destined to be lonely and miserable the rest of my life. Now, Glenn overgeneralized in two ways. Because she turned him down once, he thought she was always going to turn him down. Did yes. he really know that to be true? No. He was assuming it, but no, he didn't know that to be true. And secondly, he assumed that 100% of eligible women had identical taste to hers. <laughs> and thus, he would be endlessly rejected the rest of his life. Right. People with overgeneralization have a fear of rejection, a fear of trying new things. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Another example. And in the same way, do you deal with that the same way? Intentional and forceful? Stop, pause, and be intentional and forceful to change that thinking? Yes, that's right. It does require some stopping and some pausing and seeing if there's a different way in which you can think about it that's more accurate. As we're closing out, and it's hard to believe we're running out of time here, but maybe what are the characteristics as we close out of someone with high emotional intelligence? They're going to be curious about other people, the people that they don't know. Uh, they'll also know their limitations. They're going to know their strengths and they're, no, they're going to know their weaknesses. They're going to be very much interested in what is true and accurate. Truth is a foundational principle to those who are emotionally intelligent. Uh, they are also going to be willing to stop and help others but they'll also know when to say no, when they're not the best one to be helping others. Uh, and they will, if they have those things and other talents, they're gonna have a good leadership potential. Uh, and uh, they are very interested in being moral and good. It's hard to believe we're out of time, Dr. Nedley. <laughs> but you gave those characteristics and someone's going to want to watch next week because we're going to give practical examples of that. Let's end today with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we don't have to be trapped, that there is a way out, and there is a way for us each to think differently. Please give us the strength today to think differently and have high emotional intelligence. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.